What's happening, you guys? It is your boy, Nunzi, and welcome to the beautiful VIP Fitness and Lifestyle. And I am so excited today to be showing you guys a staple shoulder workout that I've been doing for years, and it works. We're gonna go through some classic movements to really get these boulders to be firing. We're gonna hit the delt from every single angle, and I'm gonna be giving you some great tips and tricks on how to make these delts really pop. Can't wait, let's get right into it. I know we're excited to hit the weights. Before we do, we have to do our due diligence in making sure we're warming up and taking care of our shoulders and getting some blood circulation to the area because it's going to make it that much more effective when we do smash out the iron. Shoulders are feeling warm. I'm excited. We're going to get right into it. And today's first exercise is a staple for the shoulders. Of course, it's a standing barbell press. Now, we always start our workouts with a compound movement. What's a compound movement? It's using multiple muscle groups, i.e. squat, press, deadlift. And that's why we're choosing this beast. I like the barbell. That's a personal preference. You are more than welcome to use dumbbells. And it's actually really great to go back and forth between them as the weeks go along. The barbell, you're going to be able to produce a little more weight as in the advantage with the dumbbells. It's going to be a little more unilateral work going on. If you do have injuries, it's a little safer to go with the dumbbell. But for the sake of today, old school with the barbell, okay? So, guys, this is going to be work set focus, which means we're only going to be doing the, the standing shoulder press. There's going to be no supersetting action. How it's going to work is we're going to do five sets total. The first two, however, are going to be more of a kind of a warm-up set. We're not, once again, similar to what we just did with the warming up. Once again, we're warming up in the terms of getting our muscle fibers firing. Muscles are made up of fibers, slow twitch and fast twitch. And by, like I said, starting at a lighter weight, at a higher repetition, we're gonna start to activate these fibers. So when we hit our working sets, we're gonna be able to, to really hit it hard. So first set, got a good light weight on for me. I know my weights quite well for you. Like I said, we're looking about 10 to 15 reps here just to get some blood flow and we're going to jump right into it. Guys, we're going to break down the setup of the shoulder press and we want to start talking about the grip because it's really, really important. Now, when we're gripping the barbell, I personally like a shoulder width grip, right? So just hands just outside the shoulder. This is the best grip in terms of shoulder health, power, and just comfortability. If I go wider on the bar, okay, it's gonna put my shoulders at risk for injury. And this is something you wanna be really careful with, especially when we're pressing with a barbell, especially when we're doing shoulders, because these are so uh, you know, injury prone uh, muscle groups. If we go tighter in, what's gonna inevitably happen, as you can see, it's gonna work more interior delt. So you can manipulate your grip in terms of what you wanna hit. For now though, we're gonna take a nice shoulder width grip. Now, in terms of press, uh, personal preference, I like thumb around you could do more of like a suicide grip as you see on like a bench press that's quite common i personally like i said i feel more secure with my thumb um around the bar and finally guys the most important part when it comes to the grip here is making sure that that bar is directly below your elbow this is so 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 common and i'm going to show you as i pull the barbell out what i mean okay so as i pull the barbell out you can see that the bar is directly below my elbow and not flared out or not flared underneath and that's really important you want to have that bar right below that elbow and good to go. And it's almost like you're punching the air. I'm going to be punching the air as I'm coming up through the movement. And you, it's all, like I said, feeling secure with that grip and everything stems from that grip. <laughs> Couple of really important things here when we're doing standing movements. The core is engaged. Okay, I cannot stress this enough. I want to show you what I mean. So when you're pressing, you see this roundness in my back doing this kind of a thing? That's wrong and that's going to really injure you. My belly's out. So what you need to do is tuck that pelvis, engage that core and press up. And this is probably one of the most common mistakes I see. So watch the difference here, you guys, between the two movements, okay? So this is incorrect form. Ass is out, back is rounded, core is not engaged. Watch this. Core's engaged, tight, back is flat. Now I have way more power and way more control of the motion. That is so important. I cannot stress that enough. When we're, especially when we're standing, that core stays engaged throughout the movement. And obviously as you get tired, it's inevitable that that back can want to, like I said, round. 
but that's your job to always make sure the core stays engaged. <laughs> So in terms of weight increments, I'm gonna pop on 10 pounds, you know, five, 10 pounds, that's pretty good. I wouldn't really put on more than that. Like if you're going for like 25, 25, that's gonna be a really big jump. And like I said, we're still kind of in a warm up set here phase. So make sure we're just gonna go up by another 10 pounds to really feel that weight. The whole point of these warm up sets is to get ourselves in a mental state to crush the big sets, you know, and that's, that's kind of the fun thing. These sets, it's not about going all out on these. We're not trying to go to failure right now. We're not trying to blow the load. We're really, like I said, conserving, getting ready for the big sets. So this is our second warm-up set. Another, like I said, 10 to 15 reps. It doesn't need to be exact. Just kind of getting it warm and feeling it. Another thing, guys, cannot stress when we're training is controlling the tempo. The eccentric and the concentric is the way up and the way down. And a very another common thing you see in the gym is guys letting the weight down really fast. The tempo is everything. How you build muscle is time under tension. Very, very, very important. So when I'm repping these out, my muscles are engaged the whole way through the repetition. When I lock out at the top, we're slowly coming down and pressing up. And I'm never losing that tension and I'm never losing that tempo. So that's why, like I said, you wanna make sure that you always start, uh, start with a lighter weight. This is a great tip. The weight can never control you. You have to control the weight. So as soon as, like I said, if you can't stop the weight at any point in the movement, it's too heavy, go lighter, feel the mind-muscle connection with the delts. It's gonna make your progress that much more effective. Clean eight, clean eight, there we go. Clean eight reps, feeling good, great set. It's really important to also stay on top of your rest times. 45 to 60 to maybe 90 seconds max in terms of a rest. On these bigger sets, you can take that full 90 seconds, but you wanna be very, very efficient and aware of your rest times. Another great point to, uh, to mention in between the sets here is the range of motion when it comes to a press. Now, when you guys are watching me, I'm going all the way down to the top of my chest, but that's because I have really good shoulder mobility. If your shoulders are lacking that mobility, top of the chin, even top of the forehead is gonna be fine. Don't overstretch that shoulder if you need to, and always, always work with your own uh, a range of motion. And like I said, make sure you stretch to, to increase that range. Guys, second working set. We're gonna keep the same weight. This is a good weight, you know, it's a good heavy weight. We got eight repetitions the first set here. I'm gonna go for 10 this time around. I'm gonna to decide to keep the same weight because I'd rather, like I said, try and produce more repetitions. That's another progressive overload method. More weight, more reps, or more time under tension or less rest. These are all variables that we play around with today. And like I said, let's hit 10. Push it, right? Nice. Two heavy sets in. We got one more heavy set to go. And then we're gonna move on to more aesthetics. This last set, if I could get eight to 10 reps, I'm gonna be really, really happy with it. Now, a fun thing that we can do, we're gonna do this, because it's fun. At the end of your giant work sets, we can toss in a little drop set, okay? So what that, mean, what that means, you guys, is I'm gonna go to failure. We're gonna hit about eight repetitions. I'm gonna strip the 45s. For me, I'll pop off the 25s, and then we're gonna go as many as we can, get that blood flow, get that pump, and like I said, we're gonna walk away with these bolder shoulders right here. Let's do it. Drop it down. We're gonna cut the weight in half. 
cut the weight in half. We're not screwing around here, guys. Moving quickly. Strip the weights. And like I said, we're gonna go right into it. And for fun here, I'm actually gonna go behind the neck to hit the delts a different angle. So we're gonna go a little wider grip. Come right up. That's it, you guys. Working to the end. Go and tell failure. I like to mix it up there at the end to have a little fun to go behind the neck. Got that shoulder mobility. It's gonna work a different part of the delt. But holy shit, give me a minute. We're gonna take a breath. Ooh, we feeling it, man. And like I said, always wanna start the workout with the big lift. Now we're gonna go on to some aesthetics, guys. When we hit our shoulders, I love supersetting. I love blood flow. What we're gonna move on to here is a dumbbell lateral raise into a dumbbell frontal raise. No rest in between these guys. It's gonna be a superset. Supersets are basically back-to-back -back exercises without rest. Super, super effective for, for fat loss, metabolic output, and overall pump of the muscle itself. Let's get right into it, you guys. are gonna break down how we're gonna perform these dumbbell laterals and frontal raises. All right, you guys. The dumbbell lateral raise has gotta be probably one of the most under-executed exercises I see in the gym all the time. It drives me nuts, I can't stand it. I'm gonna show you how to properly hit the delt while doing a lateral raise. Now, first things first, when it comes to your arm positioning here, we don't want to have our arm locked out. We don't want to have our arm too bent. I'm looking for slight bendage, relieve the uh, pressure on the elbow, okay? So it's almost like a slight banana, as you can see here. This is so important. Arnie, we all know Arnie, and he said it best himself. It's like you're pouring a pitcher. So when I'm coming up through the motion, what I'm thinking about is I'm turning my pinky. You see that? That is so important when we're hitting a lateral raise is I'm turning that pinky and my pinky is almost touching the ceiling. So I'm not keeping my fist straight up. I'm doing that slight rotation with the dumbbell as I come up and then back down. Once again, it's the delt that is moving the weight. My mental cue is I'm hinging from the delt and up. I'm not moving this. This is just coming for the ride and it's my shoulder that's moving the muscle. Once again, like we talked about on the press, control the tempo, control the eccentric. Yes, on the concentric, we're, we're coming up and we're slowly coming down. I don't want to see this and dropping, this and dropping. You see how I lose that tension? I want to come right up. We're going to hold it and slowly come down. Look at that, beautiful. And in terms of a reference point to come down, we're going to come all the way in front, give them a kiss, that's what I like to call it, and come right back up. Here we go, guys. Set, it's going to be... 15, 15, four times through, starting with our dumbbell laterals. Here we go. Fifteen. Shake it out. Catch your breath. Right into the frontals. Drop set, cheeky drop set, drop the weights, grab the fives, let's have some fun. Burn them out, burn them out. Woo! That's how we build muscle, guys. It's not about counting reps, putting the weight down. It's about, like I said, all the way to failure with these delts and just getting as much blood. And as you can see, I'm starting to really lose it here. And my range is just shortening. And <laughs> just getting down to the nitty gritty. I got fives. And it's the, you don't have to be embarrassed by that. Ah! Beautiful work. Go to failure all the time. That's how we get a great pump. That was a great set. Oh my God, we feeling it. Woo! You guys, there's three heads on a delt. That's why it's really important when we're training our shoulders that we make sure we hit all three. And the next superset pairing is awesome. It's a lot of fun. We're gonna go into an upright row into a dumbbell bent over reverse fly. 
Now, I wanna make this really clear. The upright row can be dangerous if you have bad shoulder health, particularly with the barbell. I love it, it's an old school movement. It's great for the traps and the delts. However, having your hands on a barbell could aggravate your shoulder. So if you do have shoulder problems and you wanna do an upright movement, I would recommend using the dumbbells. However, with the sake of today, we're gonna to use the barbell like so. Now, hands are gonna be over top, nice position, core tight, you feel sturdy. It's a, a quite a straight uh, forward motion where I'm pulling the bar up to my chin. And that's about it. I see this wrong all the time in the sense that guys are going way too high. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. You just gotta get, like I said, up to that chin and pull out. This is important. I love a wide grip. It's gonna be a lot healthier on my delts. Going narrow can gung up the traps. So go on a nice wide grip and you're gonna pull it right up. You get that good squeeze, making a straight line with your elbow. Now, same idea applies if you decide to use it with the dumbbells. No difference. It's gonna be a little more free motion there. It's gonna feel really nice. We're gonna pair it up with the bent over reverse fly. So this is important as well, hitting our rear delts. The rear delt is the most neglected muscle in the human body. I can confidently say that. Um, and this is such a great exercise. Now, I'm doing a bent over motion. You're welcome to sit at the end of a bench. Uh, you can lay down. If you do have bad backs, it's really important that we're keeping that back nice and straight throughout this motion as well. So this is a great tip when we're training the rear delts is we need to be protracted, right? So protraction, retraction, I wanna protract, which means my shoulder's all the way out of its socket, and as you can see, leaves my rear delt exposed. From here, in terms of a grip, each is fine if you wanna have it hammer style or supinated like this, it doesn't really matter. For today, we're gonna to have palms faced in, and we're gonna come straight out and make that T. My back is flat, once again, controlled back down, back up, we're breathing and squeezing. Once again, my shoulders are staying protracted and I'm squeezing out. I'm getting right up to that 180 degree line and back down and back up and back down. We're gonna do three sets of this, 10 to 12 reps per, same idea, back and forth. Let's get it. Good time, you're having a good time. I hope you guys are having a great time. I hope we're taking a lot, a lot away from this now. My delts are pumped up. It's always fun, man. I love training the delts. Looks great in a t-shirt, looks great in a two-top dress, whatever. We're coming down to the end of the workout, you guys, with a couple more staple exercises. Um, we're gonna be focused on the rear delt. The rear delt, I said this before, is really neglected, and it's so true. The rear delt is right behind here, and it's really, really hard to hit. It's really hard to activate, and that's why in the shoulder day, I'd like to hit it at least two exercises of my shoulder day routine. When you also train back, you will hit that rear delt as well, but you can never hit enough rear delt. So, first exercise, guys, we're gonna move into here is a rear delt fly, but this time, instead of standing up and bending over, we're gonna be seated, we're gonna have a little bit of support, core's gonna be not as engaged, and we're gonna have a little more uh, uh, arch in our back. So it's gonna be a little more upper back focused as well. So as you can see, I'm gonna bend over, comfortable position, arms protracted again, same rules apply. We're gonna have slight bend in the arm this time, so arms aren't gonna be locked down straight like the previous uh, rear delt exercise. And we're going to almost, it's a hybrid between a row and a fly, and I'm gonna squeeze right up. Watch that one more time, right up. This is an important note. You see the hands are positioned, Last time, it was palms faced in. This time, we are gonna take that hammer uh, style approach and have that pinky coming right out. So it's a small motion, and we're really, like I said, hitting that rear delt, and we're gonna go about 10 to 15 reps. After we do that, we're gonna move into a staple Arnie press. The Arnold press, you guys, is a staple shoulder press that works the 3D delt, and how this is gonna look is quite straightforward. We're gonna have our palms faced inward, okay? Elbows just like this, nice stance, core is tight. And as we press up, we're gonna rotate the weights out. You see that and back down. Squeeze the back up, and it's one fluid motion. Often I see it's like a mistake where guys will go like this, and then out and up, uh-uh. It's one fluid motion where you come up, right back down to starting, right back down to starting. Once again, super sets. Gotta get that blood flow, gotta get that pump. Let's finish hard. 
Let's work to the finish. Let's get this going. guys what a great shoulder pump and this is such an effective workout we hit all three heads of the delt the interior the medial and the rear to get those shoulders uh, fucking pumped up guys gotta make sure we cool down just like we started gotta cool down do not forget about stretching this is a great stretch for the delt uh, it's basically a cross body stretch you can grab a trx you can hold on to something still when it cross the body you're gonna just lean into it and we're gonna get a nice shoulder stretch you guys and like i said i'm gonna hold this for 10 20, ideally 30 seconds per side, and just really work on that breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Round of applause, you guys. Great work today. Shoulders are pumped up. I'm feeling it. I hope we're able to take away some great points that you can start to implement into your own shoulder workouts, you guys. It's your boy, Nunzi. This is VIP Fitness and Lifestyle. Please, subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments, what do you want to train? What muscles do you want help with? I'm here to help. I love what I do. At the end of the day, you got to train. You got to work hard. Have a beautiful day. Keep up the good work. Hit those boulders. Let's go. Yeah.